So anyways, like I said, Michael Harklotz, but what, what are we live? Oh shit. Sorry. Uh, hello everyone. And welcome to Still developing answer. palettes. I am Aaron Lewis coming to you from the Drew estate studio with me today is June Lou, Seth Geisland from the Villager Scar studios, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Doing well. Doing well. Uh, so speaking of Herklots, uh, I just hung out with him on Friday night, but, uh, we're talking He's about the some red wine up in Napa, right? Very is that what he's doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's exactly where he would. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the best dressed guy there, I bet, too. Uh, he was kind of dressed down. He, uh, the what? night before he did the night before he did the da- uh, cigar dinner, so oh, he was, okay. I'm sure, dressed to the nines at that at that event. Yeah, he's kind of posted on it. Facebook. He was like, yeah, took a step good. down Friday night, I'm a little more relaxed. Yeah. Uh, all right, this cigar is a Toro Extra, five and three quarters by fifty four. Um, comes out of the Casada factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, wrappers from the Dominican Republic, miners from the Dominican Republic, fillers from the Domin- Dominican Republic, and Nicaragua. Uh, blended what? by Michael Herklotz. Price point <laughs> a little, little curveball there. <laughs> Price is eighteen dollars and fifty cents. Cigars released in August of two thousand and twenty-two, and we pick these cigars up from Blue Smoke of Dallas. So if you are ever in the Ooh. Dallas Fort Worth area. Be sure to stop in for a cigar, uh, or you give can them give that promo call. code. Yeah, or you can give them a call. Give them coupon code DP zero zero percent off your order and uh, double shipping. So uh, <laughs> we take care of you. Trust me. Uh, well, all right, June. Take a few experience with this. Uh, Tom's ten years. When do we get to go to Mexico? You know what I mean. Well, when do we, when I, do we get to this? Has we get that trip? Do, I, I, this has nothing I to do with Mexico, man. Know. This is the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay, how it doesn't matter. I'll go to I'll go to any developing country. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean we have developing in our name. We got to yeah. develop pals. We got to develop countries. Look at that. Whatever. Look at that. That's pretty. That's that's a good looking cigar. That's pretty. It's pretty. It's timeless. Mm-hmm. I agree. June. Uh, okay, so I thought uh, I, I like the first third. Um, I thought that. <laughs> There was a uh, there's like this airiness to the flavors, but I, it, it's not a bad thing. It was just you know um, it was very pretty well melded kind of a flavor. Like I got these like biscuit notes, cedar, leather, pepper. Uh, but the last couple of thirds, I thought the like the leather and tannins and pepper got a little too much, uh, and it kind of deteriorated a profile. Um, yeah, it, it, it it's really nothing special. Um, it's weird. I feel like I should be expecting a lot from Ferio Tego for some reason. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean. Do you guys get that feeling when you review the stuff? Listen, you kind of feel like you, feel, you there's a higher expectation. I'm not saying anything because no matter what I say, I'm going to be getting a lecture from her class the next time I see him. Oh, okay. <laughs> no matter I, what me, he, you say, he reads and he watches these because when. I, when I was with him on Friday, he is verbatim giving me notes back about what each of us have said about the cigar. Sure. So. I'm not surprised. Yes. He's a very intelligent guy. Yeah. And I want to like his cigars because I like him, but sometimes he makes that. I think that's what it is. I like him. <laughs> I, I, you know, because yeah. he's very knowledgeable as well. Right. Oh, like it does with the, and Aaron and I has, you know, we've been to his uh, tasting seminars. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you got a guy like that, you, you kind of expect these blends to be bangers, but I think they've been more average than anything. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, Seth, take us to your experience. Listen, I had a good experience with this cigar. I like this. Not only did I thought, let's put that cigar back up because I actually, I think it's controversial to have brown bands on a brown on a brown wrapper, but mm. it looks good. It looks good. I think it looks really like good. a like a like a Arizona red like um. There's a little Colorado color to it. Yeah, yeah. perhaps a yeah. little adobe. Hmm? A little adobe. There. A little adobe. Thank, you. Thank you, Jim. Three bands is perfect too. Um, listen, first third, damp wood, tobacco notes, bits of coffee. Um, it's getting just some like nut qualities as well. Earth uh, spices, leather and creamy too. There's like this creaminess um, on the finish, which was really nice. Uh, medium and strength and body. Um, second third was showing some cocoa cream earth leather um sweet spices wood just really balanced cigar um final third fairly in line with the first two thirds good burn very good draw nice stuff john 
So, you know, what I think has happened here is that Michael Herklotz has somehow managed to blend a largely Dominican cigar that both Seth and I enjoy. And so I think at this point we can just stop reviewing Dominican cigars because that was really the goal for the past few years is to, is to find that, that, that did nexus it. and, and he's done it. Um, oh God, come on. As, as you're reading off the notes, I was oh, it's, probably been, like, it's probably been Nick Rogan's back. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of that, and we'd be like the fucking opposite. Yeah. Opposites. Um, yeah, no, it's it it's um it's so funny because uh, I I wrote in here that like you know it it it's just almost smack dab medium all the way through with just like a toe over at times, and that first third uh, starts out with like nuttiness, uh, and there's a really great creaminess that kind of anchors the entire first third together. Uh, medium spices, uh, musty wood, chocolate, um, just a, just a really great first third. And I almost wonder if he was like trying to pair this like a red wine, like the, like, because the flavors there kind of reminded me of like a full bodied red wine. Um, just the way that like the mustiness and the creaminess and the spices were together. Um, and maybe I'm just off my rocker. The, the second third, uh, chocolate and bread and wood, um, and the profile is largely similar to the first third other than those additional flavors. And then there was a sort of a push in the baking spices and the retro hill. Um, but again, it was like medium. So it was like elegant and not overwhelming in the palate. Um, just really balanced, really enjoyable. Uh, and I also found the last third, uh, kind of fell apart and was a little intense in the earth and the wood, um, a little heavy on the palate. And there was a little bit of dryness, uh, from the earth that, that kind of detracted still pleasant, but just not to the same levels as the first two third now has, I don't know if I just have the worst luck with Ferro Tagos because, uh, I was the one that, uh, tanked the TAA review a few years ago would have been the cigar of the year. I had a burn issue. Oh, that the one why. with the black bands. The, yeah. 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 The, yeah. the one, one that would have so been I, like, I, I, I think I did it to one of us. <laughs> I, I, it was, I, I don't it was know. Good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I so you know when you're smoking a cigar and you can kind of feel it start to go out. So I, I'm like, okay, like maybe I'm smoking too slow. So I I like increased my puff duration, and that mother still went out on me. And I'm like, okay, that that can't be my fault. So I had to do relight, and uh, and then I had to do another relight because it's stalled in the second third, which I think is miraculous given the flavor score. Because normally if a cigar goes out twice that trashes the, the review. So I feel like if it burned perfectly, that it would be even better. If that makes any sense. Anyways, it was a good experience. I'd love to smoke more. Aaron, what about you? Yeah. For me, the cigar show with toasted cedar, mushroom, mustiness, and earth. I uh, got some black pepper that joined a little bit later. Uh, second third saw a floral note join in. And then the final third saw the floral note depart and a vegetable note join in about halfway as the cigar started to kind of warm up a bit. Um, Nice profile through the first two thirds, uh, you know, focus around that toasted cedar earth and mushroom mustiness. That final third kind of dropped down a level as that floral note dropped out. And uh, the focus was in, around the kind of increased toasted cedar and earth combination. But uh, look, anniversary cigar, I'm always bummed out by a lot of the anniversary cigars. They don't seem to deliver uh, on a special occasion. This one delivers on the special occasion. So kudos just for that part of it. Right. Um but somebody's you know, been hanging out with her clots. <laughs> hey, I scored this before I hung out with her clots. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's got an enhanced flavor experience. Uh, price points high, but you know, if it's an enjoyable cigar, you got you're gonna be willing to pay for it, right? What was what was the price point again? Eighteen fifty. Uh. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be up for smoking this again. I smoked it Friday night. Uh, at you know, at Napa Cigar, uh, hanging out with Herklotz. Um, it's just an enjoyable cigar. Um, I really like it. So, did, did um, you turn to him and say, Shit, you finally made a good cigar, Michael? Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't quite, I wasn't quite that blunt. Oh, okay. Uh, but I told I'm him, kidding. like, after smoking the TAA, TAA, that, that is why kicked my give... ass in regards to strength, that this was much yeah, better yeah, yeah, yeah. balanced for me. So, yeah, yeah. all right, getting to the scores, we're going to start at the top with Seth at 6.82. Uh, I gave it a 6.57, John gave it a 6.52, and June gave it a 6.1. So Seth had that 6.82 matchup for you. Yeah, listen, it was great cigar, balanced, nice flavors, really enjoyable from beginning to end. Nice, nice, nice burn and draw. I smoke it again over and over. Yeah, my 6.57 matches up well. Uh, you know, very good flavor profile. I say very good. I can get in the John <laughs> rut here. Uh, good flavor profile, very good construction. Uh, gets into the mid sixes, which is high for me. Yana, you know, I'm not usually up up this high, so this is uh, a nice vacation for me. 
Um, but yeah, definitely a cigar I'd come back to. Uh, John, 6.52. Yeah, so it should it should be higher. It should be up in the 6.75, 6.8 range. And I, again, I think what held it back is the burn. And it, it's pretty clear based on everyone else's experience that uh, I just had a one-off. So um, I would expect this to score much higher if I, if I reviewed it again. And yeah, I mean, very tasty. Thank you, Michael. Very tasty. June? All right, June, 6.1. What's wrong with you guys? Um, God, um, no, it was, it was average. You know what it is, honestly, guys. I don't know if I should say this, but so, I like for me, I feel like he just needs to use non DR tobacco for me to like a blend of this. Oh, okay. Because you want to for me blend? overall, like the only you know brand that I. Well, not consistently. I used to be consistently that I like using DR tobaccos, of course, Davidoff, right? But not the Davidoffs anymore. So I don't know. Maybe that sounded a bit uh, biased. Well, purposes. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. I, I can't get over a lot of this like leathery tannins, like kind of like that sticks your palate and it just cakes your palate. I, I can't get behind a lot of that. And I feel like DR tobacco does a lot of that for me. So, all right. Uh, final thoughts on the cigar from you guys. Could you, could you imagine if Herklotz went over to and worked with Placencia to make a cigar? Like, yeah, man, holy go. Shit, would that be good? Yeah, shit, go. Yeah, he does. Go he to does. Uh, which which one? Which one's out of Placencia? The um, the TAA. Oh, sure. oh, the TAA. Yeah, oh, the, the TAA. one that I liked. The, the, huh? the monster. Oh, well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. The beast. A lot of the, T- yeah, a lot of the TAAs he's done are, are done with Placencia. He should go to Naxa. Noxa or Nax or whatever. Yeah. You like the Sterling. Yeah. You like his Sterling a lot. You like the Sterling. The Sterling's do. done. The Sterling's done yeah. the DR, man. You like Ster- yeah. That's true. Yeah, but in general, <laughs> please go somewhere else. <laughs> Except <laughs> just blend the Sterlings. Yeah. Yeah, just leave Sterling. Just revamp everybody else. And then else. and then do and then smoke his TAAs down yeah. from Placencia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Call it Ferio Nika or something, you know. All right. Wherever you're catching this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, read the full written review on the website, Development Palettes, where this may be our 1,000th review. Uh, hey. Follow us on all the social Damn. media channels, and you can catch all of our video recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one. Thank you, Michael.